didn't think the music sounded very Spider-Man either. Few things are for certain in this life, but one thing's for sure, and that's that Spider-Man makes everything better. Boring old lunchbox? Add Spider-Man. Pencil case? Add Spider-Man. Duvet cover? Add Spider-Man. 1970s TV series? <laughs> Okay, maybe not that. <laughs> but a 90s cartoon? Fuck yeah. This was my introduction to Spidey, and it was just like Batman, the animated series, but for Spider-Man. Holy! Huh? Ah! Those eyes! They're after me! This shit was intense. And I feel it's underrated, as all anyone seems to talk about is Batman, the animated series. A 90s classic, no doubt. But for Spider-Man's cartoon not to even get a mention just pisses me off. And the Batman series, you can find anywhere. It's even on Blu-ray. But Spider-Man? Only found two on eBay, and they're selling for a cool, oh fuck, I need to go and sell an organ. Sadly, I never grew up with the comics, which is something I later remedied when I stumbled across Marvel's Ultimate Graphic Novels Collection, Issue 1, The Amazing Spider-Man Coming Home. And I was instantly hooked. This series is a kind of greatest hits collection of all the most famous Marvel stories, and who did they choose to launch it? Spider-Man, of course. So, we've had lunchboxes, pencil cases, duvet covers, 1970s TV series, comic books, what am I missing? Oh yeah, video games. And my first of many Spider-Man games was Spider-Man on the Mega Drive, made by Who Gives A Shit, Let's Play. <laughs> Firstly, what is up with that ominous music? Sounds more like Silence of the Lambs, not Spider-Man. Oh, and the title has now added Versus Kingpin. So, the story. Kingpin sends out an emergency broadcast saying Spider-Man has planted a bomb in New York City that will detonate in 24 hours, please don't let there be a time limit, and is offering $10,000 reward for his capture. So we set out to clear our name and disarm Kingpin's bomb. Honestly, this game used to scare me as a kid, but I like Spider-Man and the way he controlled. So I just hang around the opening screen and swing around. A shoots your web attack or, if you're in the air, uses your web swing ability. You can also press start, select your web shield, then activate it with A, which protects you completely for two hits. An ability I criminally underutilized at first. You select your camera the same way as the web shield and it automatically selects your web attack after you take one picture. B's punch, crouch kick or jump kick. C's jump and holding C down whilst in the air will make Spidey stick to walls. All in all, there's not much to complain about. It's pretty good. The first thing you do in the game is kick the shit out of a cop and think deeply about who is robbing who. I was always told never to judge a book by its cover. Then we scale the buildings and enter the Daily Bugle, where we hear that Doc Ock's been hiding in a waterfront warehouse. We also take our trusty camera, which you use to take pictures of all the bosses to prove what's really going on, as well as giving you money that refills your webbing meter between levels. Level 1. You definitely feel like Spider-Man, crawling on the ceiling, getting the drop on your enemies, taking them out with your web, and these green guys only damage you if they're attacking, so you can get as close to them as you want which I like. What I don't like is this unkillable dog. Why the fuck is it there? It's the only enemy in the game that you can't kill. And it's the second enemy you come across in the first level. You can kill all the other animals in the game. Rats, bats, snakes, an escape gorilla, but not this dog. Why? I pissed away all my webbing on this pooch. So you make your way through the level, your spidey sense goes off and you come across your first boss, one of Spidey's oldest foes. Forklift man, created by a deadly chemical forklift spillage. He's not too difficult once you get the hang of Spidey's jump. A couple of shots in the back and he's done. But the level doesn't end there. We scale this wall and we are greeted by a retro gaming trope I hate almost as much as the time limit. Falling back when you get hit. The next room is Doc Ock. And this was as far as I ever got as a kid. Nothing's changed then. What am I doing wrong? My Sega Power Tips book says no need to mess about with a web. Just keep pummeling in with punches and he'll soon be armless. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. It doesn't fucking work. I'll tell you what you have to do. Kite him over to the left, then swing over him and land on this crate. Wait for him to come back. Don't let him get too close and just shoot your web. Doc Ock then goes on to tell you more about Kingpin's plan. Who else is involved and how there are five keys split up between five villains and Spidey's going to have to collect them all if he wants to disarm the bomb. We get our first key from Doc Ock and move on to level two. Level two takes place in the sewers and I hate it. <coughs> the 
The green sewage will damage you if you fall into it, which seems to happen at random. The precision required to kill the bats is absurd, and fuck these mermen! Ah. Shit! I haven't found any extra lives yet, so maybe there's unlimited continues? Which does take some of the sting out of all these cheap deaths. Look at this! How am I supposed to get through here? See how we just knocked me through the floor? That's, that's bullshit! Ah. Fuck it! I'm running! Can they come in the pipe? They can come in the pipe. So I come out of this pipe into a larger room which has no floor, just sewage and a bat. Cosmic. I try to climb back up to assess the situation and I deduce that I should fall right back down in the same place and die. So here I go again on my own, falling through platforms randomly. Getting nice and tenderized so the other enemies can swallow me whole like the blood sucking lawyer from Jurassic Park. Thank you. Suddenly my HUD starts flashing. Wait, the time limit I thought was just for show? It's real! And when it hits the bottom, boom, instant reset. So there aren't unlimited continues. Every death takes two hours off the 24 hour clock. And you might be saying, oh, that's not so bad. That's like 12 lives. Except no, it isn't, because the clock is always going down. You might get eight deaths at best. And in most games, extra lives respawn. The clock is always going down, and there are no items to give you extra time. I fucking hate time limits! At any point in the game, you can choose to go back to Peter's apartment to restore your health. The only problem is it makes the time go down faster, so you have to balance that the best you can. But getting back to level 2, the best advice I can give you is to just swing away. Yep, take the highest pipe, swing past the merman, go through the pipe, drop down, turn left and swing all the way to the second boss, which is Dr. Kirk Connors, aka Lizard. And he's by far the easiest boss in the game. Just snap a quick picture, then crouch down and up repeatedly and shoot your web. Level 3, and we're at the power station looking for Electro. The best advice I can give you is to just swing away. Because if you try to play this level slow and methodical, it will break you. It broke me. So swing, stay low, get the health and web refills, and get ready for Electro. He's not hard once you get used to him. Just shoot, jump, crouch, rinse, and repeat. Okay, we've got three keys, and it's off to Central Park to face the Sandman. And I've got to say, Central Park is looking pretty shit. In fact, most of the backgrounds do. Spidey and the villains are the only things that look passable for a 16-bit console to me. The gorilla shows up halfway through the level and he hits like a truck. At first I was just hitting him with a web, but man, that took an age. I even tried to just run past him hoping he would despawn if I triggered Sandman. He didn't. So get your shield out and kite him and hit. And the Sandman is unkillable. Like the dog. You don't know that though, and I only discovered how to beat him by pure luck. I just swang to the beginning of the level, fell off the branch and tried to web swing again, but fired a web shot instead at the fire hydrant. How the fuck was I supposed to know that that insignificant part of the scenery at the start of the level was integral to beating the boss? The Sandman escapes, but we got the fourth key anyway. Level 5, and the best advice I could give you is to just... Swing past everything and head to the right to trigger the motorbike bitch. Once she's been dealt with, Hobgoblin spawns at the top of the building, dropping his nearly undodgeable bombs. He can be difficult, especially when you don't know what you're doing. The best way i found is to shoot your webs diagonally, then jump kick him. Even then, he can still be a pain in the ass. So, I get the fifth key and I'm ready to move on to level 6, when suddenly, Hobgoblin informs us he's not alone. Oh shit, it's Venom. Now we can show up earlier on in the game against Lizard and Sandman, and in some cases kill you if you don't deal with the bosses quickly enough. He's really just been a thorn in your side up until this point, but now the gloves are off, and I died to him more than anything else in the game. He's wicked fast and can drain your health in two or three hits, and my first few attempts felt like I was never going to beat him. My notes was just like, Venom death, Venom death again, Venom again, OMFG, use kicks on Goblin, Venom death again, another death. <laughs> you could tell I was beat at this point. These are the scribblings of a gamer going out of his mind. It goes on. FFS, Venom. Goblin death, Venom. Goblin, use shield, Venom. Venom, Venom. Goblin, be Venom. Game over. I'm going to need some serious therapy after this. My best advice for Venom is to keep moving and keep jumping, as it's faster than walking, which will give you a little bit more space between you and him. Get used to how he moves and keep snapping off web shots when you can. And don't get stuck under this ledge. Bollocks! After we see off Venom, we get another cutscene. Of Venom. Who now kidnaps MJ. Seriously, fuck Venom! Then Kingpin tells us if we even attempt to disarm the bomb, he'll kill Mary Jane. So we immediately go and attempt to disarm the bomb. Level 6 is a more conventional level. It's tough, so have your web shield out at all times. 
The only annoying part is the end jump, where you have to web swing, then jump through this gap, where this trigger happy fuck won't stop fucking shooting. As I mentioned before, if you get hit, you get knocked back, so you fall straight back down. Eventually, by the grace of God, you make it up, and it's on to the final stage. And all we have to do is fight all the bosses again in one run. First is Electro. Next is Lizard. Followed by Hobgoblin. Then, please don't be Venom. Please don't be Venom. Shit! Now, I don't want to brag or anything, and I definitely don't want to sound like that one kid at school, Glenn, who seemed to beat everything on his first try, but I beat him on my first try. To defuse the bomb, you have to just select the key that's the same colour as the light flashing on the bomb, and press A. Once you've entered all the keys, the time limit says diffused, and it's on to Kingpin. What? I, do I don't even... I, ca I can't... I can't hit him! What, what the fuck? What? I don't get another fucking try? I mean, even in the hardest games known to man, you get as many tries on the boss as you have lives. <laughs> what do you want from me? I defused the bomb. Unbelievable. You get one shot of Kingpin per playthrough. And even then it's on a time limit, because Mary Jane is getting lowered into the arson of a nuclear rocket. Oh, and it's a loathsome shit-sucking boss fight too. Kingpin's weak spot is still a complete mystery to me. Where is your fucking hitbox? But he can hit you, no problem. He sends Spidey clear across the screen and takes great chunks with each hit. You have to use your web shield constantly and shoot webs at the mechanism that's lowering MJ to stop it for a few seconds, which, like the fire hydrant, the game gives you no fucking clue that's even a thing. And if it hadn't been for this 27 year old book, I probably would have never even known about it. How the fuck did they expect kids, the target audience for this game, to know this shit? Every defeat is just soul crushing because you know it's straight back to the beginning. But I'm getting better. I can get to the boss quicker. I've figured out that jumping down on Kingpin's head and kicking sometimes damages him. I'm remembering to shoot my web on Mary Jane. Wait, that came out wrong. Fuck. This is the farthest I've got. And I'm out of webs. Hang on, MJ. Spidey's coming. Okay, Kingpin. Let's end this. Yes! <laughs> It looks like Spider-Man's trying to shoot his web, but but I ran out of webs. Are you telling me I need webs for the end cutscene? Fuck! Yeah, you have to shoot Kingpin with one singular web shot to advance the end cutscene. Well, I did it. I saved New York and MJ's rocking tuts. The filth show up late as always. We press our PP up against MJ one more time and we get the classic congratulations screen. <laughs> Worth it. Good day, or good night should I say, your friendly neighbourhood boner here on LA's Up All Night. Coming up next on our Spidey special is the classic first episode of Spider-Man the 1970s TV series. So get ready for some of this. Hey you! Hold it! Hold it! And some of that. Kill him. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Finder. Looking for girls who are home alone near you? Finder. Surprise her with your love. Download the app right now. Okay, let's get this Spidey special swinging. <laughs> 